In the past several months, Microsoft has been making a lot of changes to Excel. Several of those changes fall into the realm of cosmetic, things like fonts and colors. For years, the default font for Office applications was Calibri at 11 points. Now it's a font called Aptos. We also have this lighter blue theme as the default theme, and this applies to things like tables, slicers, charts, and smart art objects. Now maybe it's just because I've used the same colored theme for the past 10 years or so that I'm just used to them, but I'm not really a fan of these new colors and I find myself having to go back to the older color scheme. Now if you just want to do this once, the fastest way to do it is to go up to page layout and in the upper left go to themes. And we can see here the office theme, which is the default, but then next to it is the office 2013 to 2022 theme. So this is what we'll call the classic theme. And if I give that a click, I can recolor all of these objects. Now that's not exactly difficult, but if this is where you want to start every time you start a new file, it's just more work. What we'd like to do is have this be the starting point again. So for this video, I'm going to show you how you can make the classic office theme the default, but also you could use this strategy to create a series of default start points depending on the kind of document you're working with. So maybe you use different colors for one department over another, or maybe international versus domestic, or budgets versus invoices. These could all have different start points. We'll break this down into three main steps. One, establish a location to save these new start point templates. Two, create a start point template. And then three, utilize the start point template. So the first thing we need to do is go in and set up a folder either on our local computer or on the network that will store these preset templates. So I'm gonna go to the C drive, and then in here, I'll create a new folder and I'll call it BCTI templates. And currently this folder is empty. Now we'll go back to Excel and I'm going to close Excel, not save the changes, and then restart Excel. Now I want to point one thing out, go to the new section. I want you to notice the absence of anything here for any personalized templates. That's going to change in a minute. We're going to go down to options and then in the save category where it says default personal template location, and here we're going to put the full path that will point us to that folder we just created. Be mindful that that folder must exist before you establish it in this setting. Hit OK. Now we'll go up to File. And if we go to New, notice we have this sort of separation of powers. We have the Office templates, but now we have Personal templates. And currently we haven't created any. So we're going to start with a blank workbook. Now this begins like all workbooks with the default settings, Aptos 11 point font. And if we go to Page Layout, we can see that we're using the normal margins, portrait orientation, letter size paper. We're using automatic for many of these other settings. The fastest way to make global changes to your workbook is on page layout. We could go to themes, and then here's where I could go and set the older Office 2013 to 2022 theme. Just by doing that, that's already reestablished my font to Calibri. But let's make some other changes. I'm gonna go to page layout. We'll go to colors, and just to be dramatic, we'll use this red theme. So all of our new charts and new slicers will take on this red theme color. We'll go to fonts and we'll pick something a little out of the ordinary like trebuchet. We'll set the margins to narrow, the orientation to landscape, the paper size to legal, and we'll tell it that we wanna make sure everything fits within the width of one page. Now you could continue to make more changes, but I think this is enough to make the point. Now it's time to save all of these changes as a start point for new workbooks. So we'll go up to file, export, and then change file type. We're going to choose template, hit save as, and then navigate to the location of that folder you created earlier. In my case, it's the BCTI templates folder right off of the root of the C drive. Now we'll give this template a name like BCTI invoices, hit save, and then we'll close Excel. The BCTI invoices template is now stored in that BCTI template folder. We'll start Excel. But now instead of picking blank workbook that has all of the traditional default settings, we're going to go to new and then personal. And here we can see all of our templates. And I'll go ahead and choose BCTI invoices. The default font is trebuchet. If we go to page layout, the margins are narrow. The orientation is landscape. The paper size is legal. We're restricting all the data to fit one page wide. And if I were to add some fake data, if I were to turn that data into a table, Notice how it's taken on this red theme. If I were to take that data and turn it into a chart, the chart also has the red theme. So now anytime I wanna create an invoice with all these characteristics, I could just start with the BCTI invoices template. 
So imagine creating a template for each scenario that you specialize in where each thing has to have different properties like paper size, font, margins, etc. By storing these templates in this custom folder like this, when we go into Excel, now these all show up in the personal section. And so at any time with a click, you can start exactly where you need to. Now, if you end up with dozens of templates, but maybe only two or three of those are ones that you use on a frequent basis, we could go to those templates, right click and pin them, and that will put them in this area up here at the top. And I'll do the same thing here for domestic purchase orders, right click pin, or you can just click the push pin icon. So now it doesn't matter whether you're on the personal page or the office page, you have instant access to those templates that start with your most commonly used settings. If there's a template you don't use any longer, maybe it's fallen out of favor. First off, we could unpin it from the list. Now that means that over time, this will eventually drop off the list. But if you don't want to wait for it to fall off on its own, we can right click and remove it from the list. It's still in the personal section. Now from here, you cannot right click and delete an older template, but you can go into the folder that holds those templates and delete the templates here. So if I were to delete these purchase order templates, go back into Excel, they're now gone. If they remain visible, just restart Excel and that should solve the problem. And remember, if you ever wanna go back to what Microsoft suggests for all of your settings, just start the normal blank workbook. Thank you for taking the time to watch. And if you have a suggestion for an upcoming video, put it down in the comments. We'll get it on the list. Who knows, maybe next week's video will solve the exact problem that you're having. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.